Hey everyone, it's Lisa from the blog Farmhouse on Boone, and today I want to share with you the secret for getting crispy fried potatoes in a cast iron skillet. In one of my recent videos, I talked about my five tips for healthy meals every night without meal planning, and one of them was to have easy to make sides always available and ready to make. And one of those sides in our family is fried potatoes. I love to cook with cast iron. Here at the farmhouse, there's always two cast iron skillets sitting out on the stove at all times. I actually will share a whole video on how to take care of cast iron and tips for using it. I have experimented around with making crispy potatoes for years and I do feel there's a bit of a trick to it because when I first started, they would stick or they wouldn't turn out crispy and I now know why that is. You could cook crispy potatoes in a non-stick skillet and they won't stick, but non-stick has a lot of really unhealthy chemicals in it. So you wanna stay away from non-stick. So the first step is preheating the skillet. Never put potatoes into a skillet and oil that is not preheated. So when I'm getting ready to cook dinner, I will put both of my skillets on medium heat and just walk away for a little while. After a few minutes, maybe five minutes or so of it being on medium heat, now this will be different if you have a gas stove. We have electric, gas heats up a lot more quickly. I will scoop in several spoonfuls of coconut oil. And the reason I like to use coconut oil, not something like olive oil, is it has a higher smoke point, so it won't smoke and be unhealthy for us at the high temperature that this requires. Olive oil is a very bad choice and should only be used in cold dressings and things like that. So the trick here is to get this oil hot enough so that the potato sizzles when it hits it, but you don't want it to reach the smoke point. I'm gonna just scoop some in. Now let me give you a few more tips while I'm doing this. One is you need to start with a well-seasoned cast iron skillet. If you use cast iron all the time and you cook eggs and pancakes and meat, everything else in it, lots of things with fat, it's constantly getting re-seasoned every time I use it, whenever fat heats on it and fills the pores of the cast iron. It's a well-seasoned skillet that I haven't had to worry about re-seasoning in five years. And you always wanna start with a clean skillet. So I didn't actually wash this since the last time I cooked on it, but I did wipe it out and made sure there was nothing stuck to it. Because if anything is stuck on the skillet, for whatever reason, the potatoes will stick and they will not crisp up. So just something I've learned, it has to be clean. It can't have anything stuck to it at all. And if you cook in it with the tips that I'll give you, usually things won't stick. So you don't really have to worry because the last thing I actually cooked in this was potatoes and it didn't need to be washed in between time. So let me do a close up to show you about how much oil is in this. Some other very important notes to make. One, you don't want to use a lid. Moisture is the enemy of this crisping process. It really is. A lid on the skillet will cause moisture to be trapped inside. The potatoes will get mushy as opposed to crispy. So no lids at all. Another key, I have a larger cast iron skillet. And as you can see, there's stuff stuck on it. And it's all around the outside. And the reason for that is this skillet is too big for my burner. So the burner only goes to a circle about this big. It doesn't reach the outsides of it because it's not large enough. And so I can use this skillet and I do use it, but it isn't ideal because this outside part never gets hot enough. And if potatoes venture over there, which they do when you're stirring, they stick and they do not get crispy. They just stick to the pan, it's frustrating. So I still use this because I have it and I always need two skillets because I don't wanna overcrowd the pan. And so this isn't ideal. You wanna use the right size. So if you're just now investing in cast iron skillets and you come across this, like this is a 12 inch, I believe. This is perfect size for my burner. Every area of it gets preheated and hot so that you avoid the sticking issue. So the next tip is overcrowding. Do not overcrowd the pan because parts of the potatoes won't get crispy and parts will. For my family, which we have a family of six, I always keep two going 
because I can't cook enough potatoes in one for a meal. Overcrowding is a no-go. You can pretty much just want it to be one layer and not stacked on each other. This also prevents excess moisture, which is important. So the size of the potato I find doesn't really matter. If we're in a big hurry, like say dinner is in 10 minutes, I'll cut them really, really small. I'll shred them with my cheese grater to make hash browns if I'm really in a hurry. You can do them larger if you have a lot of time for them to cook. That doesn't really matter so much as long as they're not overcrowded. Once the oil is good and preheated, which you can tell by throwing a potato on and seeing if it sizzles, that's pretty good. We're ready to start. Another thing to note is I do not turn this down. On my stove, which you might have to play around because I feel like different stoves are slightly different, I preheat it on about seven and then I will leave it on seven for the entire duration of the cooking. Soon after this comes the most important tip of all. Now for the biggest tip of all, don't stir the potatoes. I'm sure you've experienced this with something like pancakes where if you try to flip a whole lot, you ruin the pancake and one flip is best. That is the same with these potatoes. So I leave them on a really long time and you're almost sure that they're gonna be burnt by the time you get back to them, but they won't be. And you need to leave them way longer than you think you do because they need to be completely crisp on this first side. If you make the mistake of flipping too early, they will stick and they will not crisp up. I've done it too many times. So I've tried this a lot and I've learned the hard way that you can't stir them. I'm gonna leave these on at this seven for a pretty good while. And what's happening is all the moisture is getting cooked out of the potatoes and it's rising as steam. You wanna start with a dry potato. So if you wash them, that's fine. Make sure they sit out on a towel before you cut them up and cook them or you can rub them real good with a towel because again, moisture is the enemy of the crispy potato. If you want to check on your potatoes but you're not sure how dark they're gonna be underneath yet and you don't wanna make the mistake of flipping them all, you can always look at one potato and see if it's ready. Now, after you do this a few times, you're gonna know about the amount of time that it takes for them to get to this point. And the way you know is they'll come up really easy. They won't be sticking at all, and the bottoms will be really golden and nice and crispy. I won't salt these until I'm done. And the reason for that, again, is the moisture issue. So we don't wanna to draw too much moisture out of the potatoes into the cooking liquid and that's what salt does. So I salt these at the very end. So I'm gonna add some salt and pepper. You could add some dried herb. They will be a great side dish for our dinner tonight. And they were super simple to make and they taste like restaurant fries. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel for more of our handmade home food from scratch and our simple farmhouse lifestyle here on Boone Street. If you'd like to see more videos like this or more tips for cast iron skillet cooking, please leave that in the comments below. I would love to do some videos on that because I love using my cast iron. I know that they are a very healthy cooking option and no kitchen should be without them. So if you wanna see more of that, let me know. Please stop by the blog farmhouseonboon.com to stay up to date with things happening in the farmhouse or find me on Instagram or Facebook. Thank you so much for stopping by the farmhouse.